Mass balances are very basic engineering principles. It works on in equals out when you have steady state. And for the purposes of what we're going to be doing here, we are assuming steady state, so in equals out. When you solve a mass balance, the first thing you want to do is look at what information you're given and then look at what information you're trying to solve for and figure out if you can actually do it. To do this, drawing a diagram is extremely helpful because that lets you organize all your information and actually see what's going on in your process. So now you have a mental image of what's going on. From there, you write your equations, make sure your equations equal your number of unknowns, and then it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers and solving. So let's take a look at an example mass balance. Here's a sample mass balance problem. So in this problem, we're mixing sugar syrups in a tank. We have information on each syrup, and we want to figure out how much of the second syrup, syrup B, was added to that tank to get a final solids content of 15%. So let's start drawing that diagram. First thing we'll do, here's our tank. There we go. Engineers are not very good with fancy symbols, so a little box is pretty much all you need for your tank. We'll call it T. We have syrup A coming in. We have syrup B coming in. And we have some kind of final syrup. We'll just call that S. So let's make sure that matches up to what's going on in our word problem. We have syrup A and B. Those are our two syrups being mixed in that tank. We've got arrows for A and B, so we're all set there. And then we have our final syrup, and that's S, and that's accounted for coming out. We don't have any other syrups in here, so we're all set with our diagram. Good. Now we understand what's going on. Now we can start with our total mass balance, and that's, again, what comes in equals what goes out. So here... We have A coming in, B coming in, and that equals S coming out. And these are in kilograms. So now that we have that, we can do our component mass balance. And since we are given information about the solids, we'll use the solids as our component. We could do this in terms of water, but then we would have to convert our solids content to water content. And this is fairly easy, but it's just an extra step. So we're going to do our balances in terms of solids. And here, the little x's are our solids fraction. When we write the balance for our solids, we are doing a mass balance on the solids. And so to do that, we need to take our total mass and multiply it by the solids fraction. And so this looks like A, X, A, plus B, X, B, equals X, X, S. So here, if we just plug in some numbers, if we have a kilogram of A and the solids content in A is 10%, that means we have 0.1 kilograms right here. That's how this equation works. So let's double check this for the number of unknowns we have. Okay. Now, we know what A is. It's 10 kilograms. Right there. So we figured that out. We know what our solids content of A is. It's here. We know what our solids content of B is. It's right here. We know what our final solids content is. It's right here. So, let's check and see what we have. We have A. We don't know B. We don't know S. Let's go to our solids balance because we've got too many unknowns to solve that total. Again, we have A. We know the solids content of A, so we're good with that term. We don't know B, but we know the solids content of B. And we don't know S, but we know the solids content of S. 
So if we look at these two co equations combined, we don't know B and we don't know S in either one of them, but that is okay because we've got two independent equations. We've got two equations, two unknowns. We can actually solve for both B and S. So since that first equation, the total mass balance, is already solved for S, let's just substitute what S is equal to into our component mass balance and that way we only have one unknown in our component mass balance and we can go ahead and solve for it. So we'll just do that. So here we go. Now I'm substituting for S right here. Okay. Now the only unknown in our equation is B. So we can solve for B. To do that we actually need to rearrange the equation for B. So we have to get B by itself on one side and everything else over on the other side. So we'll start by multiplying that excess through on the right hand side. Now that we have that finished, we are going to move all the terms with B in them over to the left and all the terms that are not B over to the right. So let's reorganize. All right, now what we can do is because the terms on the left are both multiplied by B, we can actually pull B out and put the rest of the information in parentheses. So that's going to look like this. And there's our left-hand side. We can do the exact same thing on the right-hand side. So we're just going to pull A out. Okay, there we go. Our final step is to pull that XB minus XS term over to the right side. Now B will be all by itself and we can go ahead and solve for it. And there's B. Now we just plug all our numbers in and we solve for B. And when we do plug our numbers in and solve for B, we see that B is equal to 3.33 kilograms. And if you remember, a was equal to 10 kilograms, and so that means S, which is equal to A plus B, is equal to 13.33 kilograms. And there you have it. That's our math balance.